Aaron Rodgers agrees to a new contract with the Jets. Obviously, it's good news. We'll break it all down today on Locked On Jets. You are Locked On Jets, your daily New York Jets podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. This is the Locked On Jets podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day is our motto. It's Thursday, July 27th, 2023, and I'm your host, John B. from gangreennation.com. Thank you so much for making the show your first listen or first watch every day. Subscribe to the show for free on YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts so that you'll get new episodes as soon as they're posted. If you enjoy the show and are listening on a podcast source, please give it a five-star review. And if you're watching on YouTube, give this episode a big thumbs up. It helps us out and helps other Jets fans find the show. Well, Aaron Rodgers has a new contract. It was one of the last outstanding items the Jets needed to take care of before the beginning of the season. And on today's show, we're going to break it all down. What does this deal mean for the Jets? And this was something the Jets had to do because Rodgers actually restructured his deal before he was traded from the Packers to the Jets. And he had to do that to help facilitate the trade. Otherwise, Green Bay would have an an exorbitant dead money cap hit. So he had to kind of restructure his deal and that restructure ended up putting his 2023 cap hit at under $2 million and his 2024 cap hit at $107 million. And it did not take a genius to figure out that he was probably going to make more than $2 million this year and less than $107 million next year. So the news broke last night that the contract had been agreed to Uh, pro football talks, Mike Florio was the first to have the report that they had finally agreed to a new deal, but nobody knew what the contract was. Uh, Florio reported the old numbers, you know, the the one the one to two million for twenty twenty three, and the seven the one hundred seven million for twenty twenty four. He he mentioned those, and people took that to mean that that was the new the new contract, which it was not. Obviously, a deal had to be struck, and then through the day on Wednesday, Aaron Rodgers was asked about it after Jets practice. He said the deal was the the deal was agreed to, but you would have to wait to find out. Well, finally, Tom Pelissero of NFL Network broke the story, and it's a bit complex, so we're, we're going to get into it. It's, as Pelissero reported it, for all intents and purposes, a two-year contract worth $75 million. Now, you may also hear that it's a five-year contract, which is true, and so let's break this down. How can it be both a two-year contract and a five-year contract? Well, and I'm also using the great site Over the Cap com and Jason Fitzgerald's analysis to try and piece this together. So the Jets signed Rodgers on paper. It's a five-year contract, but in reality, they're only expecting him to play two of these years. And the way that this works is that at least as far as I can tell, the, both years he's expected to play, he'll receive most of his money in the form of a bonus payment. Now, why are the Jets doing it this way? Because bonus payments can be spread out, at least as far as the cap hit goes, over the full life of the contract. So you can spread a bonus payment over five years. The player gets all the money up front, so it's a great deal for Aaron Rodgers. I think it's, in fact, it's just a couple of days. Aaron Rodgers gets his full bonus payment for uh, 2023. So he gets a $35 million bonus payment, but the Jets are able to spread that $35 million cap hit over five years. So it's essentially $7 million per year over the next five years against the cap. Meanwhile, Rodgers gets $35 million in full in the next couple of days. So essentially, you, you really reduce his cap hit because even though you're paying Aaron Rodgers $35 million, his cap hit's only going to be the $7 million that goes for this year because the other $28 million goes to future year's cap sets. And then they also added like a, a small base salary because you do have to pay a player a base salary. So it's a base salary of around you know $1 million or so. So... The second year is it's very similar. The structure, at least as far as Jason Fitzgerald has estimated, uh, Rogers has what is expected to be another bonus payment next year for about thirty eight point one million dollars. And again, they can stretch that out over multiple years. So even though Rogers will get thirty eight point one million dollars and again, the, the reports out of this contract are all still not confirmed yet, but we're, we're kind of piecing, piecing it together. So Rogers will get a thirty eight million dollar check, but the thirty eight million dollar cap it will be spread over multiple seasons. So 
essentially, and it's it's been this way for a while. It's been, the Jets are in you know win now mode, and essentially they are pushing cap hits to the future to try and load up for right now. That's that's the strategy right now. That's why they traded you know multiple early draft picks for a 39, soon to be 40 year old quarterback. It's all about the present right now for the New York Jets. And essentially, you know, again, Jason Fitzgerald does a great job. He's pieced it together. He's made some rough estimates, which I think we can presume are going to be in, in that ballpark. So if it's a two year, $75 million contract, his cap hit for this year is around $8.888 million. I think, the, and I think the Jets did that on purpose because he's wearing number eight. So his cap hit this year is around $8.888 million. And then next year, it'll be around $17 million. So if you add that up, that's about $25 million over the next two years. Now there's the old 75 million, which means you pushed 50, five, zero to future cap hits, but that was to be expected. But there's another thing that, that's key here. Rogers was set to make $110 million previously over the next two years. Under And the contract he signed with Green Bay last year, 2023 and 2024 were supposed to add up to $110 million. So Rogers essentially gave back $35 million. And I don't care how much money you have. That's a lot to give back. Rogers is, you know, taking kind of a discount. I mean, I, I think the contract is fair. I think, in fact, I think you could say that the Jets are getting him probably at a pretty good value because it, his, his average salary of $37.5 million per year, that's out of the top 10 for quarterbacks. In fact, it's the exact same average salary Derek, uh, Derek Carr is getting from the Saints, who was the other uh, potential option, at least as, as far as major options go for the Jets. So Rogers, you know, taking a pretty big pay cut to play for the Jets and it's something you got to love to see. You know, the, not, I, I can't think of many, I can't think of any player who's given back that much money who, what, which he was entitled to earn. So it's tough to look at this situation and say it was anything other than a really good deal for the Jets. And you know, I'll go back, you know, going back a few months, I said this over and over that his contract, that one with green Bay, the $110 million over two years was a complete albatross. And people got people got really mad. I don't think I've ever seen more listeners angry with me than when I mentioned how the contract was just too expensive. And if the Jets made this deal, they had to get it lower. Uh, and by the way, you should never get mad at something I say. I'm just giving you my opinion. I mean, I do the show hopefully because I'd like to think I'll give you a perspective at least. And you feel free to agree or disagree, but you should never get mad over something I say. But this is. I mean, I think everybody realized that that contract was just a non-starter, and that if this deal went through, the Jets the Jets would be irresponsible to not try and reduce the contract. And fortunately, Rodgers was more than willing to do it. And if you're Green Bay, you have to be upset. That's that's not our problem. That's Green Bay's problem. But if you're a fan, if you're a fan of the Green Bay Packers, or if you're the Green Bay Packers organization, you look at Rodgers give all this money back after all the acrimony of the last couple of years. You got to be scratching. You got to be more than scratching your head. You got to be pretty frustrated. But again, that's not our problem. So, you ultimately, if you look at the situation, the Jets. I'm going to go back to the word of the off season. The Jets did not have a ton of leverage in this situation. They kind of had to re rely on Aaron Rodgers' goodwill. And the good news is that Rodgers was willing to take a deal that is probably a little bit better than market value for where he is in his career. And now, you know, there's this talk, is he going to be a top five quarterback? Is he going to be a top three quarterback? You know, I'm not really sure about that. I think you natural to expect some degree of re regression at 39 years of age. But, you know, just outside the top 10, I'd expect him to be, you know, top 10-ish. So I think the Jets are going to get a little bit better value than they're paying for him. And uh, Jason Fitzgerald of Over the Cap made a great point. He said that, you know, if you look at the discount Rodgers took, it essentially pays for Zach Wilson's contract. So if you want to look at it that way, this pay cut, in a way, you could argue it, it kind of makes up for the fact that Jets have Zach Wilson on the roster and they made the mistake drafting him two overall. So, you know, look, if the given the given the circumstances, I think you got to say Jets did very well here. This was about as well as you could have hoped things would go. In fact, it's probably better than anybody could have imagined things would have gone when we're talking about this new deal for Aaron Rodgers. Now, head here on the Lockdown Jets podcast, we'll continue our discussion of Aaron Rodgers' contract. I think there are a couple of effects this could have on the team. And I'll tell you what they are continuing this Thursday edition of the locked on jets podcast. Today's episode of locked on jets is brought to you by eBay motors. 
Our partners at eBay Motors have teamed up with Locked On Fantasy Football host Vinny Iyer to bring you some of the best fantasy picks each week all season long. Whether you are prepping for a draft or scouting the waiver wire, every week we're going to provide you players who are guaranteed to fit your roster. So with draft prep underway for the upcoming season, let's see who Vinny has picked out for us in this week's eBay's Guaranteed Fit Fantasy Picks of the Week. Are you looking to make a smooth turn in fantasy football snake drafts with the last pick of the first round and first pick of the second round? I love that. I'd actually rather have that than the first overall pick because you have the first overall pick. You got to wait till the end of the second round. I think the best value is at the end of the first round and the start of the second round. Well, if you have this, you'll be guaranteed a winning one-two punch of workhorse, workhorse power in your backfield when taking the Colts' Jonathan Taylor and the Browns' Nick Chubb back-to-back. While Taylor is a perfect rebound candidate, in a more run-friendly offense in Indianapolis, Chubb is also set to dominate with more of the combined workload in Cleveland. Vinny Iyer from Lockdown Fantasy Football is going to help you win your fantasy championship, and eBay Motors knows a champion, what a championship team is all about. It's each player being a perfect fit. The same goes with your vehicle. With eBay Guaranteed Fit and over 122 million parts and accessories for your vehicle right at your fingertips, you can make sure your ride stays running smoothly. Air filters, brakes, batteries, taillights, alternators, shock struts, you name it. eBay Motors has it, and they'll make sure it's right, the right fit for your car because eBay Guaranteed Fit helps you understand exactly which part you need for your vehicle the first time. So go forth, switch gears, crank up the AC, and say goodbye to sweating if your ride needs a little fixing up because now you know you'll always be set up for success from the get-go. With eBay Guaranteed Fit, everything your vehicle is calling for is just a click away. For all the parts and accessories that fit your vehicle, just look for the green check. Get the right parts, the right fit, and the right prices at ebaymotors.com. Let's ride. eBay guaranteed fit. Only available to U.S. customers. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. Thank you so much for making Locked On Jets your first listener, first watch every day. Big shout out to you every day. It's a big day for the Jets yesterday as they finally strike a deal with Aaron Rodgers. Kind of one of the last outstanding aspects of this offseason was getting Rodgers' contract redone because he needed more than one, you know, whatever, one or two million this year. He needed less than 107 million next year. And the Jets were able to get Rodgers to leave $35 million on the table. So I think you got to be happy with that. No matter what your views were on this trade, no matter what your views are on this all-in approach they're taking, it's less money for Aaron Rodgers. Pretty good deal. So a couple other thoughts I have on this. Number one, and this was one of the unknowns of the offseason. This was one of my fears of the offseason. What Aaron Rodgers are you getting? Because I think the Aaron Rodgers you saw last year in Green Bay seemed kind of disinterested. And was this a guy who was just coming back for another season who was kind of going through the motions trying to cash a check? Or was this a guy who really wanted to be here? Was this a guy who really wanted to play as a member of the Jets? Was this a guy who was really motivated by what happened in Green Bay and wants to end his career on a really high note and he's really focused on that and I think everything we've seen from Rodgers so far since the trade has suggested the latter that he really wants to be a member of the New York Jets and I think there's no question about it now again man left 35 million dollars on the table if he said I'm not taking a pay cut the Jets really would not have had much of an option because of how everything they gave up for him I mean what were they going to do tell him to retire so Rodgers was willing to leave money on the table and This kind of tells me that, and it's another indication, and we've seen it the whole way through, that this guy's really focused right now. And you need to focus, especially when you get to the end of your career. And I think one of the biggest problems with Brett Favre in 2008 was he didn't want to be here. It wasn't even clear he really wanted to play because he retired in the early in the 2008 offseason. They kind of came back to Green Bay, kind of wanted the attention. And, you know, I think it was it was a bit of an open question when the Jets traded for Rodgers what sort of what Aaron Rodgers they were getting. And I think to me, this, this is another sign that, you know, maybe it'll work, maybe it won't, but it's not going to be because Aaron Rodgers, you know, is not focused, it's not because Aaron Rodgers doesn't want to be here. The jets seem like they could be getting the best of Aaron Rodgers because if it's all about the money, if you're just going through the motions, you're not going to give $35 million, but you could give some money back. You're not going to give $35 million back. And go back to what I said, I don't care how much money you got. 35 million is a lot of money. So I, I think another sign that, you know, you're going to get the Aaron, if you, if the Jets, if this thing's going to work, the Jets need an Aaron Rodgers who's like breathing fire, who's ready to go out and destroy the league, who has something to prove. And I think that that's something the Jets, you know, you can look forward to this season. And I, I kind of felt that we were heading in that direction anyway. This contract kind of verified that for me. 
Now, another point I want to make, and you know, maybe this is true, maybe this isn't. This is just a theory that I've got. Sometimes my theories pan out, sometimes they don't. I think it's much easier to go to a guy like Corey Davis right now and ask him to take a pay cut. You know, if, if I'm the Jets, what I'm saying is, hey, if Aaron Rodgers, one of the greatest quarterbacks, quarterback, most important position on the field, one of the greatest quarterbacks to ever play the game, can leave $35 million on the table because he wants to win a championship, why can't you leave $3 million on the table? I think that's kind of a powerful thing, isn't it? I feel like that's the type of thing you can go through the organization and say, you know, it doesn't even just have to be about the finances. Be yeah, it's about something else, you know, motivate people to work. Say, this guy, he's a legend. He's a Hall of Famer. He's going to wear a gold jacket five years after he retires. This dude believes in what we're doing so much that he left $35 million on the table. You can't work hard? I feel like it's one of those gal- – it could be one of those galvanizing things that just – kind of has a ripple effect. And look, I think the model for the Jets, well, at least what they're going for is pretty clear. They're, they're going for the Tampa Bay thing with Tom Brady, where they're just loading up for a short period. They're hoping it works. You know, two years from now, things are going to be difficult to navigate. Um, so they're pretty much just going all in for this next year or two. I think it kind of shows potentially some free agents out there. Aaron Rodgers is committed. And – if you're out there and you're looking to chase a ring, and that's one of the things Tampa Bay did is they found guys who were, you know, maybe guys who were near the end of their career but still productive players, some big names who were chasing a ring, and they sold them on their vision. And that's one of the things the Jets weren't really able to do this offseason, and I feel like part of it may have just been it took so long to get this trade done, and also this contract was kind of an outstanding issue, so the Jets may not have known how much money um, they were they were going to have to play with because the, the deal with Rogers wasn't done yet. This again, I think it can be something you, you can point to is that if you're a veteran who, you know, you're not really sure about the Jets, you're not really sure where you want to sign. This I think kind of closes the questions on whether Aaron Rodgers is all in with this franchise, because this is a guy who really, if he wanted to be the highest paid, one of the highest paid quarterbacks in the NFL, he could be. And listen, I, I don't want to like canonize a guy for taking a $37.5 million salary. I mean, it's not like Aaron Rodgers is in need of any money it, it, or he's going to be in need of any money. He's still making a pretty good living. I mean, I think I'd sign up for a pay cut that still involved me making you know $37.5 million. But the fact that the man's willing to leave so much money on the table to be here, it shows you that he's all in, that he's fully committed to this thing. So if you're wondering, you know, it, where are the Jets right now? Is Aaron Rodgers all in? I think there's no, there's no question about it. And, of course, I've never been a free agent in the NFL, but I studied the league. I've listened to what players, people who are actually in the NFL have to say. I think it could help the Jets. I don't want to overblow how, how much it will help the Jets, but I think it certainly could be a positive thing for this team. Now, head here on the Lockdown Jets podcast, we will close out this Thursday episode. We're going to turn our attention to what's happening at training camp. We've got some injury updates to bring you. We'll talk about some Jets who are a little bit banged up, you know, what their prognosis is for returning. That's as we continue this Thursday edition of the Locked On Jets podcast here on the Locked On Podcast Network. This is the Locked On Jets podcast here on this Thursday. We've talked about the Aaron Rodgers contract. Uh, if you've missed the first two segments, here's my short summary. Well done, Jets. Good job. Good, good situation. Rodgers takes a pretty big pay cut. So, Got to be happy with, with, with what they've done here. Given the circumstances, I think they did better than anybody could have expected. Let's turn our attention to, to training camp. And I, I don't really like going into the day-to-day of you know, who's up, who's down at training camp. I'm sure there's a point where we can talk about that. But I don't like to obsess over these things because at the end of the day, it's practice. And guys, it's not just that. Guys are getting ready for the season. They're not necessarily focused on maximizing their performance. Neither is the coaches. But even if they were, you know, if we went, if we were in October or November, what would you care if like somebody had two or three good practices in a row? What would you care if somebody had two or three bad practices in a row? And at this point of the year, as much as anything, I'm looking at injuries. So, so what's the injury situation for the Jets? Well, they have a couple minor guys who are banged up a little bit. Um, Alan Lazard has been banged up in practice. He's sat out recently so, something that seems fairly minor uh but he, he kind of sat out practice john franklin myers is dealing with a relatively minor injury and then the jets have a couple of guys on the physically unable to perform list you have Dwayne brown 
Robert Sala has expressed optimism about Brown returning sooner rather than later. So on yesterday's show, uh, you know, if you if you tuned into the mailbag, I talked about how Brown's status was up in the air. We'll see how well that theory pans out. I, I, like I said, I have a lot of theories. My theory is that Brown's the starting left tackle and that there's not going to be much of a competition. We'll find out. I guess we'll find out. And another thing that plays into this is Mackay Becton. Is Mackay Becton healthy? Mackay Becton apparently, you know, was but was on a quote unquote pitch count early in the week, which is smart coming off two very serious knee injuries. But he also apparently, you know, missed some practice on Wednesday with some knee soreness. So, you know, I would be speculating if I gave you a, a strong take on whether Makai Becton is healthy or not. I just don't know. And I think when I see these injuries like that, my view is let keep an eye on it. You know, don't treat it like it's the end of the world. Don't treat it like it's nothing. So essentially, I think this is an ongoing story with Makai Becton. Can he stay healthy? And is it just a case where you know he's sore and he misses one day of practice? Or is this going to be a longer lingering type of thing? We don't know yet. But it, I think it's something that you have to keep an eye on uh, going forward. And then one final note is CJ Uzama, who began training camp on the physically unable to perform list, has apparently passed his physical. And you know, going back to the physically unable to perform list, Essentially, that means you're injured at the start of training camp. So you get banged up. If you're banged up before training camp begins, you start on the list, and then you only come off the list when you're ready to practice. Meanwhile, you could get injured the first practice, and you're not on any lists. And I think that sometimes the physically unable to perform list makes people believe that players are more injured than they really are because, well, you're on this list. You're on an injured list. Meanwhile, you know, one day later, if the, if the, it just means that you're injured at the start of training camp. One day later, during camp, you could get injured, and it's like you're not on a list, so nobody really cares. My overall view on training camp injuries is to keep an eye on them. Again, if it's a player coming off a lingering injury and he has this, he has another uh, issue, the same spot he was injured, then it's worth keeping an eye on. But obviously, there are going to be bumps and bruises, and they're not worth getting upset over because it's July 27th. Jets don't play till middle of September, a real game. So not really worth panicking over any of these things. And Jets are going to be judicious about these things. They're not going to rush a guy back because you're rushing him back for practice and exhibition games. That wouldn't make any sense. Nothing's really on the line. Nothing's at stake until the Jets play the Buffalo Bills Monday night football week one. So nothing worth panicking over, but a couple injuries here and some of them might be worth keeping your eye on. That's all for today's episode. This has been the Lockdown Jets podcast, part of the Lockdown Podcast Network. Your team every day is our motto. As always, if you enjoy the show, hit the subscribe button where you're watching or listening so that you'll never miss an episode. If you're listening on a podcast source, again, give the show a five-star review. And if you're watching on YouTube, please give this episode a big thumbs up. These things help us out and help other Jets fans find the show. Hope you have a great Thursday. We'll be back tomorrow to close out the week.